Toy cars made from rubber bands and sewing spools have been around for a long time, but this version's a lot faster. You can see I'm making these about four and a half inches in diameter. Any bigger than six inches, it's hard to stretch rubber bands around them. You're going to want rubber bands around them because um, that's the best way to get traction. I've tried all sorts of wheels without rubber bands and they just spin around. So I cut two circles out of each piece of cardboard. You can see my note about removing extra cardboard. I'm going to be spinning this cardboard around and if you have too much it runs into stuff. So this little piece is the compass. I've made them skinnier and they get a little floppy so compass needs to be a fairly beefy rectangular piece. I'll be hammering this in with a hammer. If you hammer too hard you can break a push pin. Push pins work great. I've tried bigger nails for the compass center. Don't work as well as the push pin. So there you can see I stick my utility knife in. I'm trying to hold it steady, rotating the cardboard around, keeping the knife in the same place. If you have a really sharp knife, that makes this a lot easier. This is the place where you can break a push pin when you're removing it. So remove it carefully. Toss out the other disc and um, and do the next one. Repeat the process. So the, the reason I like to do two circles here you can see is that I'm using the rectangular cardboard as a lever and if you just use a piece of cardboard the size of the circle you don't really have much to grab with your other hand. I'm a right-hander that's why I'm holding the utility knife with my right hand. If your discs are not the same size then your rubber band may slip off to one side. And if you have two pairs of discs that are different sizes, uh, then you might have one wheel that's bigger than the other, so the car might kind of roll in a circle. Generally though, if you do this right, you're gonna have nice wheels and it's gonna go straight. The first issue I'm addressing here is the grain. I want to make sure that the grain of one piece of cardboard is perpendicular to the grain of the other. And then I try to apply a lot of glue but a thin layer so when I stick these together there's no crack between the two layers. If you're using hot glue you just got to put it together and uh, you don't have much time to adjust if you get it wrong. If you have the rubber bands maybe do some pre-stretching and you can see I brace the rubber band against my belly. Tum. <laughs> this uh, this gets better the more or easier the more you do it. If you have little hands, it may be hard. You might need to get somebody to help you. This enlarging of the axle holes you could do at any point, but I just do it now. You could use pencil. It's nice to use a nail because then they're the same size. Now for the wire frame, I'm using a coat hanger. You could use some heavy gauge wire you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot, just using some pliers. There's a really cool way to straighten wire by twisting it and stretching it. Do a search on how to straighten wire if you want to find out about that. So I'm finding the midpoint of this. I'm doing it by just a little physics trick. When my hands meet, it should be balanced. And I'm going to find the more precise balance point here and then I'm going to just bend this in half and that should get me pretty close to having this bent in half but you'll see it's never exactly half so I cut the long end off. Now I'm bending the hooks. These are the hooks that hold on to the rubber bands uh, the twist to be, become the motor of the spool car. And these two U-shaped hooks need to be bent the same direction so they kind of line up with one another. But then in just a moment I'm going to bend the wire about an inch and a half from the end of the hooks. And those two bends are going to be opposite on opposite sides because each hook needs to stick in toward the center of the spool car from the outside. The hooks need to point at one another. So I'm bending them in and 
then fussing around a little bit to try to, yeah, see, there they go, bend them in the opposite direction, so they point at one another. And then I'm trying to get them in the same plane so that everything's symmetric. One's kind of up higher than the other. There I'm twisting it, making sure that they, they are symmetric. You can see this isn't really the shape of the car. In the next step here, I, I do some bending so that the, the wire can go around the wheels so it doesn't actually touch the cardboard wheels. This is the part where the two wheels get connected together to make a spool. They're going to be connected with a rectangular piece. See this pink arrow right here? That is about an inch more than the length of this rectangular piece. So what I did there is I, let's see, I'm subtracting an inch right here. What I did was I stretched the hooks apart so there's just a little bit of tension in the rubber band. Just enough tension to pull the hooks together and hold the wire firmly in the spool. You can see I'm taking care to make sure this rectangular piece is really square. The squarer it is, the better the wheels are going to be aligned. So now I'm marking the width of the rectangular piece. It's about a little more than the radius of my wheels and a little less than the diameter. You can see I went a little closer to the radius. So I'm cutting out these edges and now I'm going back with my square and making sure that this other edge of the rectangle is square. The next step is to mark the exact middle of this cardboard piece lengthwise so I can score it with my utility knife and then bend it so that it becomes kind of a triangle if you look at it from the end. While this part's wrapping up, I want to mention the next part. I'm going to score this and then I'm going to bend it and it will have a crack that opens up and then from the end it'll look like a triangle. And you'll see a, a triangle that I've drawn with the red line and a couple of yellow lines and the hole, the axle hole, should be centered on that red line and it should be inside the triangle. So you can see the axle hole is inside the triangle and centered on that line. So then just glue it on, have patience, make sure it's really set. Do the same thing, same arrangement, same kind of triangle formation with the other wheel. And then you should have a good spool. At this point, it's pretty hard to resist the temptation to fill in that crack that opened up when you do the scoring. All right, the torque pin. This is basically just a paper clip in this case, could be anything. And it should um, go right through these holes and really pass right through the center. If you can imagine the axle going from one axle hole to the other axle hole of these wheels, the pin should go right through there. And you just bend it to get it to stay on. There. Don't forget to put the nuts on first. Sometimes I forget that. Then I'm just cutting some slits here so that the hooks can fit through. I'm going to be gluing over those slits so it's not a problem that they're there. A nut will be glued over each of those. So push them through. Then slide the nut right up there. You want to get it centered over wherever the hole is. and. Take your time here, put a little hot glue around on one side and then carefully move things around. Sometimes the hot glue hardens really quickly when it touches metal because metals are very conductive. They take the heat away fast. Worst case, you can rip that nut off there and then glue it back on again. So do that with um, both sides. Put the rubber band on and now it's time to check for rubbing right there. So you don't want the frame to rub against the cardboard of the wheels. The, in fact, the purpose of the nut on each side is to keep the frame out and away from those wheels. Now it's time to wind it up. So first you insert your torque pin between the two strands of the rubber band and this is the preferred method of winding. Let it go. 
Ta-da! There's a lot more to share about these spool cars, so there should be some links popping up in the space below in the near future.